This isn't Frankenstein, but there has been a major step toward the creation of artificial life. For the first time, scientists have created a colony of cells entirely operated by man-made DNA. Now, this could have huge implications. We're going to take a look at some of those in just a moment. But let me just show you how scientists at the J. Craig Venter Institute pulled this off. It starts with the uh, assembly. The team uh, began by putting together strands of DNA, little, little tiny strands of DNA. They, they actually put it together. It was the longest strand, uh, strand of DNA they'd ever put together it, it, in, in a loop. Some of you may know more about this than, uh, than I do. They used a brand new technique to join a million units of DNA together, longest strain of synthesized DNA ever assembled. They took the loop and put it into an empty bacteria cell. You can see that in the second picture. It looks like a smarty at the end. Uh, they're basically... The idea there is it's like installing a new operating system on your computer, right? So that, that, that cell was kind of an empty shell. They put this loop of DNA into it, and guess what happened? Look at this third shot over here. It started, uh, it started replicating itself. Uh, the the man-made DNA proved to be so accurate that it took over the cell, and it replicated itself to form a bacterial colony. Now, this process didn't just happen. It took about 15 years. It cost about $40 million to successfully create this one colony. And, and let's not forget just how tiny these bacterial cells are. They're way smaller than a grain of salt. Take a look at this, okay? That's a coffee bean, okay, the big brown one. Now let's push in. You've got a rice, grain of rice over there. You've got a sesame seed. Behind that, you have a grain of salt. Christina, let's push in even further on this. Beyond the grain of salt, uh, you've got an amoeba uh, Beyond that, you've got a paramecium. That blue one in the back, that's a human egg. Gets even smaller than that. A skin cell. See the pink one? That's a skin cell. Push in even further than that. The red one is a red blood cell. Then you've got an X chromosome. Uh, and I think we're coming up to how small this thing is. We've got an E. coli. No, it even goes even further than that, right? Is that where we are? No, it's further. Push in even further to show you how small this is. Remember, the first one was a, a coffee bean. We just keep on pushing even further. And all right, it's, it's, so it's smaller than what you can see there. That's E. coli on the bottom right of the screen, and it's even smaller than that. That's the cell that has been created. Uh, why would you spend $40 million, by the way, to create man-made DNA for something so small? Well, uh, J. Craig Venter is, a, is a, a genome pioneer, and he says it's about understanding life. Listen to him. This is the first time we've had a life form whose genetic code was made chemically. It tells us about the dynamic nature of life. Uh, that it changes second to second. You put in new information, it, it evolves, uh, transforms into something else. You take away the DNA, you take away your DNA or my DNA, we're, we're dead uh, very quickly. You can't have life without the genetic code. And you change the genetic code, you can change the life form very rapidly. So it teaches us a lot about fundamental nature of life. Now, beyond scientific curiosity, Venter says this kind of technology could eventually help create biofuels. It could be helped to design uh, new vaccines, for instance. It could even help make more food. There are some potential full uh, pitfalls, though. Let's, uh, uh, let's discuss some of them. Uh, this is a letter that uh, President Obama wrote to his bioethics commission in which he says, quote, this development raises prospects of important benefits such as the ability to accelerate vaccine development. At the same time, it raises genuine concerns, and so we must consider carefully the implications of this research, and some environmental groups are warning about unforeseen consequences. Haven't quite gotten to what those are yet, but we'll look into them.